Amen. Amen. Psalm 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd. Mm -hmm. I shall not want. And I'm reading this from the King James Version. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Uh, in a world that affirmations have become a major deal when we think about uh, everybody talking about affirming, you need affirmations over your life, you need mm -hmm. confessions, you need this. Uh, if you just take Psalm 23 and you confess that over your life every day, you would have a transformational life. Mm -hmm. You would have an extraordinary life. Mm -hmm. If you grab hold to this, that's why the Bible is so powerful. Because yes, you can literally grab hold to one scripture, make that your affirmation for your life, and it will literally be transformational. Mm -hmm. You will live an extraordinary life just by holding on to one scripture, yes. Psalm 23. Right? If you took that scripture, you just dissected yes. that uh, throughout your life, you spend a lot, the next five years just dissecting this scripture, mm -hmm. you would literally have a transformed life. Your life, not to mention all the rest of the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> right? This is just one psalm out of 150. Wow. It's just one out of 150. Let me just be clear about the power of the Bible. This is one psalm out of 150 where there it is one book out of 66. Yes, that's right. One psalm out of 150, which is one book out of 66. Yes. I'm just saying. <laughs> if you can't find transformation in the Bible, you ain't looking. That's right. Right? Now, I got a whole bunch of transformation. My whole life is transformed yes. because of this work. Yes. That's, that's just beside the point. Amen. But I just realize many times God reminds me, you can just hold on to one word from God. And as they said, one word from God is enough to change your life. It is. If, if you just lived Psalm 23, you didn't read nothing else in the Bible ever again in life, you would live a transformation, a tri transformed life. Literally. Yes. Literally. Everything, salvation, uh, affirmation, uh, con con conference of power, uh, uh, establishing lordship, everything is right there. From, yes. from, from the, the first verse, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Boom. Everything changes. Yes. Do you not realize in that one verse, that one verse of scripture says, I shall not want. One translation said, because the Lord is my shepherd, I have everything I need. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. That ain't even the verse I want to focus on today. But I can get stuck right there and be done. Because that can literally change the course of your life. Yeah. That already establishes lordship. That already establishes faith. That establishes everything. Faith, lordship, trust, everything. Because the Lord is my shepherd. Yeah. Because Yahweh is my shepherd. Because Jehovah is my shepherd. Whichever name. If you just start with Lord, you can just work the whole name piece That's before right. you get started. Right? All right. The Lord. Stop right there. I can preach that for the next the next year. Canada has that scripture this year. Right. <laughs> right. And that's not even where I'm trying to go. I'm really trying to get to verse three. That's not even my message. I got stuck. That's why that's why I, I, I'm so passionate about this thing. I realize that when I start that I've already taken up almost five of my minutes and I haven't even talked about the scripture I was trying to get to, which is verse three. And let me get to it now. He restored my soul. <laughs> My point was not even that, but the point is made, right? Okay. Now, he restored my soul. Uh -huh. I don't even want to get to the rest of that chapter, to verse th rest of verse 3. I just want to look at the A portion. Yes. He, the Lord, restored my 
so. Yes. Hebrew, the Hebrew meaning of the word soul is living being. Mm -hmm. He restores my living being. I, I, I don't want you to miss what soul means. He restored my living being. That means everything about me yes. he restores. Yes. That's why I love the song. I want her child of this back together with the message of the song this morning. She didn't know what my message was, but, but if you want to deal with the law of attraction, there it is, because I was already there when she said, now, now that I'm free, I can be me. I have been touched Change, heal, totally free yes. from sin. Yes. Every shackle broke. Now I can live again. Yes. Come on, God is a healer. Do you not know? We don't tell it enough. Jessica back there working the camera. She got her report. She she was uh, gone to the hospital have a biopsy. The biopsy was done. It was brought back. They said no cancer. What they found was what was the word? It was benign. Benign. That means it had no power. That's right. I know what that feels like. I had a, a, I had something removed that was in, on my head for years, and, and I went to a doctor here, and they had it removed. They had to send it out to have it tested to see whether it was cancerous or what it was. Brought back benign. Yes. So it was benign. God is a healer. He yes. restores my living being. Yes. Yes. My soul, I know we talk, I talk a lot about your soul being your mind, will, and emotions. That is who you really are. That is your living being. Somebody say, he restores my living being. I love watching those restoration shows. I used to watch uh, the motorcycle channel and the car channel. I love seeing those cars restored, and them finding cars in the dump, and them restoring those car, cars that they purchased for $100, $200, and they end up selling it for $20,000, $40,000 because it was restored. Yeah. Do you not know when you are restored, you become more valuable than you were in the beginning. They will restore a car that came from 1965. A car that in 1965 might only cost $1,000, $2,000 brand new. But now that it's restored in 2019, it is worth 10, 20, 30 times more than it was when it was first built. Restorations end up costing more than brand new vehicles. Yes. Somebody said restored, restored means more valuable. Means more valuable. Let me just let me just say that when as in the natural, so in the spiritual, yes. when God restores your living being, you become more valuable than you were when you first came Ooh. to this restoration center. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I know? The more I get into this word, the more I let the word restore me, the more valuable I get. Do you not know I'm worth more than I was 10 years ago? Yeah. Come on. Because God is restoring me. Yes. That's why you can't continue to acquiesce to where you were 10 years ago. Yes. That's past. That's been. Do you not know how much more valuable you are now? Now that you've been sitting on the word, now that you've been feeding, now that you've been praying, now that you have been allowing God to do a work in your life, yes. you are more valuable. Yes. Thank you, God. He restored my soul. Yes, God. He restored my living being. Yes, God. We are being plagued, literally plagued by the enemy of our soul. Mm -hmm. And the enemy of our soul is using something that is literally non, uh, you have, don't have the ability to touch. Mm -hmm. The enemy of our soul is using, especially in America and around the world, something to devalue us that literally you cannot touch. Mm -hmm. It is not tangible. That thing is stress. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Mm -hmm. The enemy knows that God is trying to restore our living being, yes. and yet our living being is being corrupted, is being rusted out, is being taken advantage of by something you can't even touch. Mm -hmm. My wow. God, my God. You can't touch stress. Mm -hmm. If you said point stress out to me, <laughs> well, years ago, my uh, our middle girl, uh, 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 
not today, but uh, Kendall. Kendall uh, I said this some years ago at home, and the girls were talking, and uh, I, I said, do you not know? She said, I'm so stressed out. I'm like, you can't even see stress. You can't tell. She's talking about, yes, I can. And she pointed to one of our family members. <laughs> you 
human beings. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So we spend most of our life trying to do, trying to do, trying to do. I gotta do this, I gotta do that, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. I gotta take my child here, I gotta, I gotta pick up this, I gotta, I gotta do this class, I gotta take this, I gotta do, I gotta do this, I gotta do. And we stress ourselves out. I gotta do it, I gotta get over here, I gotta do it, I gotta, I gotta do this now, and I gotta do this. And we spend Woo! no time in the presence of God Woo! just being. My yeah. God, my God, you're Let's preaching, go. sir. Yes. Because we have been trained to become human doings and been pulled away from being human. Mm. Or from being human beings. Yes. Do you not know? That is the trick of the enemy. Yes. That is why we are stressed out. Because we continue to try to be human doings and living doings rather than living beings. Mm. Most of us have yet to spend the time in the presence of God meditating. Most of us don't take five minutes of, day, of the day to just be quiet and be silent. That's how the monks really get their power because they spend so much time being silent. Yes. Breakfast is one of those times where they spend the morning eating breakfast in silence. Yes. No TV, no news, no this, no that. The first part of the morning is spent in silence. Do you not know many of us, why we don't know God is because we're too busy doing. When the Bible says, how do we know God? Tell me, the Bible says, and I'm not even going to ask you, I'm not even going to quiz you, I'm going to just tell you the answer. He says, be still. And know. Amen. Tell somebody, be still. Be still. We grew up in a time where our parents used to say, hey, be still. Yes. We need some parents. We ain't telling children to be still. We want to be busy. You need to be busy. You need to, no! You need to practice being still. Right. They used to tell us, study to be quiet. Yes. Yes. We need to spend six months studying to be quiet. Stop talking so much. Yes, God. Yeah. Right. And stop listening to everybody talk. Yes. Yeah. And I told me, oh, you missed this. Uh, 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 did you not see X, Y, and Z? I was like, no, how was I supposed to see it? Oh, it was on Facebook. Well, I 